Every evening we have that chant. Brahma Vahara's sublime attitudes, developing thoughts of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity. Because these are our motivations on the path. We have goodwill for ourselves and goodwill for all beings. Because we're looking for a happiness that's harmless, doesn't harm us, doesn't harm anyone else. This is a quality of a good heart. There are so many intellectual explanations of the Dharma that we tend to forget that it starts with the quality of the heart. The word citta in Pali, which is used to translate mind, also means heart. Unlike Western languages, the languages of the Buddhist countries don't make a clear distinction between the heart and the mind. The heart has its reasons, the mind has its desires. Our thoughts, our reasoning has its desires. We're trying to train both sides. If only one side gets developed, it gets lopsided. This is why the training doesn't begin with sitting down and learning a lot of concepts. It begins with generosity which is a quality of a good heart. The Buddha emphasizes this generosity that's voluntary. When he was asked where a gift should be given, he said, give where you feel inspired, where you feel it would be well used. That's your choice. And the culture of generosity that's developed around that tries to protect that choice. There's a rule for the monks that when Someone asks them, where should I give this gift? Their response should be, give where you feel inspired, where you feel the gift would be well used, well taken care of. Following on generosity is virtue, which again is a quality of the heart. You try to act in ways, speak in ways that don't cause harm. The Buddha lists five things that are harmful across the board, so you try to avoid them. Killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. And the motivation there is goodwill for yourself and goodwill for others. It's interesting when the Buddha says, you harm yourself by breaking the precepts, and you harm others by getting them to break the precepts. In other words, you harm them more, say, by getting them to kill or steal than you would by killing or stealing things from them. And then there's conviction, which too is a quality of the heart, and this is where the, one, the quality of the heart begins to meld with the qualities of the mind. There are certain things you believe. In other words, belief here has three meanings. There are things you believe, ideas that you believe, then there are people you believe then how you act based on those beliefs. The fact that you're calling them beliefs means you don't really know. There are a lot of people who say, well, we don't know these things about karma or rebirth, so I'll just leave them aside and leave them as unresolved. And it's more honest to say we don't know whether they're true or not which is a possible position, but no one can live that way. When you are living, you're making choices about what you're doing, saying, thinking. And you're calculating which things are worth doing, saying, and thinking. To what extent is putting in an effort to be really skillful going to pay off? And your calculation will include whether you think there's going to be any karma consequences in this lifetime and future lifetimes. And it's when you see that you will probably behave best if you accept the teachings on karma, rebirth, that desire to behave well. On the one hand, that is a quality of the mind, it's also a quality of the heart. These are three of the qualities the Buddha said are the qualities of a good friend. You find someone who has these qualities, you try to emulate them. That leads to happiness in this lifetime. 
and it leads to happiness in future lifetimes. In other words, when you consider yourself to be generous and virtuous and have conviction, you're being a good friend to yourself. You're looking after your well-being now and on into the future. But there's one more quality. That's discernment. This is where we get into more of the area of the mind, because discernment has to do with cause and effect. It's described as penetrative knowledge of arising and passing away. And some people interpret that simply as meaning just seeing things come, seeing things go, learning to develop some equanimity towards their coming and going, but basically allowing them to do their thing. But that's not penetrative. When the Buddha uses the word penetrative, he's talking about knowing when good things come, what to do with them, when bad things come, what to do with them. After all, that's the duty of mindfulness, is not simply to watch things coming and going. If you realize there's something good that you already have, you try to maintain it. In other words, you keep it from going. And if there's something good that you don't have yet, you try to give rise to it. So it's more than just watching things coming and going. There's an element of ardency in discernment. But here too, the discernment is colored by the issues of the heart. The Buddha said, discernment begins with the question, what what I do, what will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? So you're going to use your discernment for the sake of happiness, long-term. Now that's a desire of the heart. The discernment comes in as you understand cause and effect, what kinds of actions will get you there, and what kind of happiness is really worth going for. How long-term do you want? The Buddha said, ideally, go for happiness that doesn't change at all. That's more than long-term. That stands outside of space and time entirely. But building up to it, you ask yourself, what will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? You get back to generosity, virtue, goodwill. That's the very beginning. And then you build on that. This is where the path comes in. You train the heart, you train the mind, not only to be virtuous, but also to develop powers of concentration. Because you realize if you're really going to be discerning, you have to get the mind really still, very centered. so it can really see what's happening. Otherwise the mind's running around all the time. It's like tuning into a radio station where there's a lot of static. As long as there's static, you can't really hear the message that's being broadcast. But if you tune it in just right, and the static grows still, quiet, then you can clearly hear what they're saying. The same way when you get the mind really still, get the body really still, then the little things that are happening in the mind, the subtle movements of the mind, become very clear. And this is the other lesson of discernment, which is the suffering that's weighing down the mind. It's not being opposed on you from outside. It comes from within. Craving, clinging, these are the things you're doing. You're actually doing the suffering. You're not simply passively being subjected to suffering. You're doing it. You don't want to see that. Now these qualities, conviction, virtue, generosity, discernment, lead to a good rebirth, because they're good for you in this lifetime, and they're good for you on into the future. So when the question comes up, how do you prepare? What do you think about, as when you think about the possibility of dying before you've gotten anywhere in your practice? Just remind yourself, well, just keep on doing the practice. Develop these qualities. And it's the qualities that take you where you want to go.
you make make a, a general determination. You want to go to a place where you can practice, but don't put too many other qualifications on it. And John Fuang told me one time he was reading a book about King Ashoka, and at one point the book said that he said in one of his edicts that the reason he was doing all this good with his lifetime as a king, not because he wanted to become king again, but he wanted to have a capability within himself. In other words, he wanted to be able to have the strengths inside that he could depend on himself, the skills, the discernment. And the skills here are not just intellectual skills, they're skills of the heart. It's a concept we don't think too much about, a skillful heart, but that's basically what the Buddha is teaching. Because you're not going to gain insight unless you have a good grounding and generosity and virtue. As he said, you're not going to be able to get into concentration properly, and you're not going to gain the discernment that goes to the transcendent levels without generosity and virtue. After all, if you're going to know your mind, it's best to watch your mind while it's doing good things. When it's doing things that you know are wrong, know are harmful, you're going to hide a lot of things from yourself. Your motivation, well, why are you doing those things? There's a lot in there that, where the mind is lying to itself. But when you're doing good things, you can be true, open, and above board. The mind becomes like an open book. written in a language that you know clearly. Because it is a language of the heart. So try to develop this skillful heart. It's good for you now, and it's good for you on into the future. It combines the qualities of a good mind and a good heart. And when they're combined in this way, they can take you far. <laughs>